Good morning, class. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School is the place where my spirit is fed, where my faith grows stronger, and where I learn how to be an overcomer. And we are learning and growing in the knowledge of this, uh, recognizing the things that would defeat you, undermine your faith, rob you of, of your blessings, and growing in the strength of faith. Faith is a lot like physical strength. Uh, you know, you can get weak if you don't eat or if you don't use your body. It, it tends to just get weaker. And faith is the same way. It has to be fed and it has to be used. And if you'll feed it, and use it, it will get stronger. And it'll just keep getting stronger month after month, year after year. And what the results of that is what, after a period of time, what used to seem impossible seems entirely doable now to you, entirely reachable. And what just, you know, seemed so far out of reach, it seems like, well, yeah, God can do that. Yeah, I can expect that. We can do that. That can happen. And maybe last year or the year before, you just wouldn't have even considered it. Just wouldn't have even believed that it could happen for you. But that doesn't happen just automatically or it doesn't happen by begging for it and calling it prayer. It happens by exposure to the Word of God and the Spirit of God and you being open to it and you're making choices all along the way. I believe that. I'll accept that. I believe that. I receive that. I'm convinced of that. And as you do, it accumulates. It grows. It develops in you. And it pushes fear out. And you become full of faith instead of full of fear. <laughs> and you become full of expectation of good instead of full of fear about something bad happening to you. Totally different light, a life, living in the light versus living in the darkness, uh, experiencing life versus death. Said out loud, I'm a child of the light. I'm a child of faith. I'm an overcomer. Get your Bible, something to make a note with, come on into the room with us, and let's believe the Lord right now. Lord, we release faith. We ask for answers. We ask for direction and utterance and help right now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Look with me again in 1 John 5th chapter. We've been looking at this for uh, all week now and, and previous times about faith that overcomes. In verse 4, 1 John 5, 4, it says, Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. God didn't make anybody to be a victim or to be defeated. Everyone that is born of God, it is in your spiritual DNA to conquer, to win, to overcome over every evil thing. Now, many are not doing it, but it's still what you're made to do and what you're called to do. He goes on to say, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. This is how you do it, day in, day out. Now, we looked at uh, Romans, the 10th chapter. Let's look at that again quickly. Romans 10, talking about uh, how you're born of God, is that you uh, believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth and you are born again born from above. And he went on to say in, in verse uh, 15, 14, 15, 16 about 
the progression of you, it's preached and then you hear and then uh, you believe and then you call. How will they preach? Verse 15, except they be sent. As it's written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Then he says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. I used to think in the beginning days of our ministry, we'll soon have been in the ministry for uh, 40 years. And um, I used to think, I'd quote Hosea often, that says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And I thought, well, the, probably the, the biggest problem is people just don't know. People have not heard and they don't know because if people hear the good news, then it'll fix everything. They'll hear it. They'll believe it. Hallelujah. But as the years have gone by, I realize that's not the case. And I realize I wasn't quoting the whole verse. Hosea 4, 6 didn't just say, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. That's not even the end of the sentence. The rest of it says, because they have rejected knowledge. Well, that's different than just being ignorant of it, having never heard it. And so can you hear this question that the Spirit of God was saying through Isaiah all those years ago, and then said it again through John, and then again through uh, Paul here, who has believed our report? That comes straight from the heart of God. He's saying, I've done it. I saved you. I redeemed you. I bought you back from Adam and Eve and everybody's mistake and sin since then. I bought you back from judgment and death. I bought you back from being outside of fellowship with me and not having peace or grace. I bought you back to full fellowship. I sent my son, Jesus, he took your place. He paid the price. He became sin so you could be righteous. He became sickness so you could be healed. Chastisement of your peace was on him so you could have peace that passes understanding. He was made poor so you could be rich. And the list goes on. Then he says, who believes this? Who believes my report? And sadly, most of the planet says, we don't believe it. We want another God. We don't even believe there is a God. We don't believe it. Most of the billions of human beings on the planet have not believed his report. Many haven't, some haven't heard it yet, and we need to keep on publishing it so that those that haven't heard will hear. But that's not the only problem. Many have heard it or some portion of it, and they just don't believe it. They just don't accept it. And if you reject God's report, His gospel about His Son and the plan of redemption, then it will seem to you like there is no God, because there won't be any power manifested of His presence or truth around you. Why? Because He even taught us, don't cast your pearls before swine. Don't give that which is holy to the dogs. What does that mean? Don't give precious things to, to those that don't value them. And when he, when he gives you the gospel and He tells you what He has done for you and for mankind, and you say, I don't believe in that stuff. Oh, you don't know the insult you have expressed. You have no idea what you have just done. If you don't change, you have judged yourself unworthy of eternal life. You have chosen to spend eternity with the unbelievers and God's enemies. If you don't want Him, there's only one other place to go. There's only one other group to be a part of. Are you glad, class? Are you glad, folks, that you have not rejected the good report? You have not. Somebody say, I believe the report. I believe the good news. I accept the testimony of God. 
Hallelujah. If you're watching today and, and you've been on the fence or you've acted foolishly and, and rejected God news, uh, God's good news, here's your opportunity right here, right now. You can change it. You can miss hell right now. <laughs> right now. Show some respect to the creator of the heavens and the earth. Show some respect to what he said about his son. Everybody said out loud, affirm or reaffirm your faith. Said out loud, Father God, I do respect you. I do believe what you have said about your son and about sending him to the cross. I honor this. I respect it. And I believe the report. I believe the gospel. And Jesus, I confess you. As my Lord and my Savior, I receive complete redemption. Thank you for saving me. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. There's nothing more important that you will ever do in this life than that. Because that determines your whole eternity past this life. But it also determines... What kind of life you have down here while you're here? Because those born of God are overcomers. Hallelujah. I think y'all are getting this. <laughs> oh, overcomers. Somebody say, I'm born of God. And I'm a born overcomer. And what is the victory that accomplishes this overcoming? Even my faith. Now we saw this in... Uh, uh, Galatians, I want you to turn there again. Galatians, the third chapter, because when you say gospel, people have a very limited, sometimes religious idea about what that means. That term is used too loosely. People, people talk about what well, it's gospel, the gospel truth. And it's just a, a phrase to them. They don't even really know what they're saying. And no matter how much you learn about it, there's more to learn. It's a big thing, the gospel. What is it? It's glad tidings or glad news about the good things that our good God has done for us in Christ. Well, what has he done for us in Christ? A lot. <laughs> when you say, I'm saved. The Lord saved me. You said, a, you said a lot. Saved from what? From what? Yes, hell. Yes, sin. Yes, judgment. But much more. A lot more. One of the things that we saw in Galatians yesterday was 3.13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Well, now, in order to know what you've been redeemed from, you'd have to find out what the curse of the law is. If you have no clue, then how do you know what to resist and what to receive? How do you know what you don't have to have, what you've been redeemed from? How to fight the good, of fight, good fight of faith concerning it? If you go back to Deuteronomy 28, you look in Leviticus and other places, it gives a full list of things that are part of the curse of the law. And among that list is every disease and every sickness known to man and even those that have not even been named yet. Every sickness and every disease is part of the curse of the law. Also, poverty, uh, drought, not having abundance, not having your needs met, your enemies stealing your possessions. All that's part of the curse of the law. Not having your freedom, being oppressed, being crazed in the wits, <laughs> having fear and torment and anguish. All of that is part of the curse of the law. Tell me the good news. Christ has redeemed me. From the curse of the law. Does most of the church believe that? No. They believe they're saved from hell. The ones that do believe. But they don't believe all of the good report. And we, we saw from Hebrews 4 too. 
the gospel didn't benefit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Keep reading this. It said, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. That, that's not, that's not the end of it. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So the good news includes Christ redeeming us from all the curse of the law, of, of breaking God's commandments, all the curse that comes on the disobedient, the rebellious against God. That, so that means no matter how dumb you or I may have been in the past or what kind of stupid mistakes or rebellious things we've done, if you'll repent, you don't have to be cursed for any of it because Jesus was cursed in our place. Hallelujah. He hung on the tree, the tree and became accursed for you and I. But that's not the whole of the good news. There's more. But wait, <laughs> there's more. <laughs> what? Not only are you redeemed from the curse, all the bad stuff, the sickness, the poverty, the oppression, the confusion, et cetera, et cetera. We were also uh, qualified for the blessing. Redeemed from the curse and given the blessing. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. And, th and, and I know this from some small experience. Much of the church does not include in what they call the gospel, the proclamation of the blessing. You're not preaching the full gospel if you're not preaching the blessing. Is everybody awake? Yes. Somebody says, wow, I don't know about that. Well, back up. Just a couple of verses right here. Same book. Verse 6, Galatians 3, 6. Oh, this is what led up to these statements. He said, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Is he talking about you, child of God? Yes. Are you of faith? Yes. Yeah, you're born of God. And, and your faith is what overcomes the world. He said, They which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before what? The gospel unto Abraham. Now, there would be people who say, Oh, no, no, the gospel didn't exist until after Jesus came. <laughs> Wrong again. <laughs> no, it did. What is the gospel? Glad tidings of the good things that God has done through the redemption of Jesus Christ. And is that big? Does that include just maybe one or two things? Is it, is it big? What has God done for us in the redemption of Christ? It affects Everything in this life, it affects everything in eternity. It's huge. Amen. The gospel includes every good thing. It's the good news about all the good things our good God has done for us in Christ, in his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. And part of that is the blessing. And that was proclaimed to Abraham centuries ago. And we're told, we're even given the excerpt and the quote of what he's talking about right here in the verse. He said, verse 8, the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham saying, in you shall all nations be blessed. What's the gospel? Jesus became cursed in my place, so I never have to be cursed. I never have to experience anything that's in the curse of the law uh, that would come on the disobedient, the rebellious, 
the unbelievers, I'm redeemed and set free from all of that. And <laughs> I have been given the blessing. That's part of the gospel. Only are with me, class. So you hadn't heard the whole gospel until you hear the other part. Right? Don't have to go to hell. Hallelujah. Why? Don't have to be cursed. Glory to God. Is that the end? No. No. Come on, are you reading with me or not? Verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Verse 14, that. We could say, in order that. The blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. And we see, leading up to that, the gospel of this, of what? Of this blessing, had been preached to Abraham, who is our father of faith. We which believe on Jesus now are called the children of Abraham, and we are blessed with faithful Abraham. Hallelujah. What does that mean? Jesus got the curse he didn't deserve. He took it by faith because he loves us and didn't want us to have to go through it. We get the blessing. We didn't deserve. Oh, come on, class. Are y'all happy about it? Is this good news? Is it the best news you ever heard in your life? This is good news. And so then what, what the prophet said, who has believed this report? Why would you say that? Because so many don't. They just don't. Even though, you know, I'm waving my hands and, and I'm quoting scriptures here, still there are so many people that hear this and because they grew up where they were taught against it, they were taught tradition instead of Bible, and they say, yeah, but you know, we don't preach all that abundant stuff. We don't preach all that blessing stuff. Watch what you're calling stuff. I didn't write this. Y'all with me? Show some respect. God says, the Holy Spirit of God says, we have been blessed with faithful Abraham. We've been redeemed from the curse so that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. That's you and I. We are mixed breeds from who knows where and who knows what. And we couldn't run our heritage and family tree if we had to. And thank God we don't have to. We're born of God. And now we are blessed with faithful Abraham. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. with faithful Abraham. And that blessing is part of the gospel. He said, this gospel was preached unto Abraham. Well, what, what was preached to him? If you go back to Genesis, what is it? Genesis 12, I guess. He said, uh, in you will all the families of the earth be blessed. He, he told Abraham that he was blessing him and he would be a blessing. And those that blessed him would be blessed and that in him all the families of the earth would be blessed. Is it true? Yes. Is it true? Yes. Is that blessing on Abraham and all his descendants and the descendant it was talking about specifically was Jesus? And are all the families of the earth blessed who will believe because of Jesus? Yes. yes. And that is that good news includes the blessing. You want to confess over your life that you are blessed and you want to decree that everything I set my hand to prospers. I'm blessed when I go out. <laughs> I'm blessed when I come in. Right? I, I'm blessed in my basket. I'm blessed in my store. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say blessed. I'm blessed. I, I'm blessed. And we've already gone over that whom God has blessed, nobody can curse. Nobody can curse. Don't you fear any of this junk. They should be afraid of you. That you're going to bind them up and shut them down. <laughs> you, you, you can bind up things so that their ugly spirits no longer help them anymore. And they'll go out of business. I've seen it. Been a part of it. 
No, they should be. They should give you a wide berth if you know who you are, because they don't want none of you. Because the greater one is inside of you, and you are not cursed and cannot be cursed. Uh, you might say, "Well, yeah, but my family and there's been a curse on the Smiths." And there, but you need to shut up talking like that. You have been born again. You've been born from above. All of that. Those old things are passed away. They're gone. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Come on, somebody say, I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed from, the curse from the curse and the blessing, and the blessing of, Abraham. of Abraham, the blessing of God, the, blessing of God. the, empowerment, to the empowerment to succeed, the power to prosper, the power to, the power to be victorious, to be victorious. Is, on is on me and in me. And in me. I'm blessed I'm of the Lord. Hallelujah. Man, the more you believe that, the more you say that, the more you decree that, it just opens the gates for the Lord's goodness to flood and manifest, and it shuts the door against the enemy causing problems in your life. I believe the good report. I believe the gospel. Hallelujah. And our time's up again. Well, as you can see, we didn't get through all of it. Come back next time, and we'll get more faith And we'll get more revelation of gospel here at Faith School. Really enjoyed being with you again this week. And I'm getting stirred up about faith in the gospel and the blessing being part of the gospel. I I always want to speak increase over our partners uh, this time of the week. And I want to remind you that as a believer and as a partner in ministry like this, Uh, You are not cursed. Your business is not cursed. Your ranch is not cursed. Your your farm is not cursed. And anything that, any curse that tries to come against that, you have every right to stand up against that and rebuke it in Jesus' name and to tell those things. They cannot, you can't operate on my farm. You can't operate, this disease can't operate in my cattle. You cannot do that. I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. I want to agree with you right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I agree on your word with all of our partners, and I decree that they, they are blessed. Their farms are blessed. Their businesses are blessed. Their ranches are blessed. Their churches, their ministries, their homes, and no evil thing can live there, can function there, can stay there. We rebuke it command it to cease and stop and go because we are the redeemed. We are not cursed. We are blessed. Say it out loud. I am blessed. Hallelujah. We love you. We'll see you again soon back here in Faith School. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.